Sasa tuanze na swale. Swale nasema nataka kufahamu sababu kubwa za watu kunyimwa visa licha ya kuwa na documents zote muhimu. So uh, swale swale documents documents ni muhimu kukuwa nazo. But most of the time you'll notice at the US embassy they don't ask most of the time they uh they want you to they 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 want you to communicate communicate what your documents say so instead of because a lot of times when we go to the interview most of us are hoping and waiting for the time when they'll ask us for for uh, to provide those documents but a lot of times you end up getting denied and they don't ask you any any they don't ask you for any documents or sometimes they even grant you the visa but they didn't ask for any documents documents are good to prove so documents come in place when there is doubt because sometimes depending on how you are answering your questions your body language and everything you might answer a question that might make the the v or visa officer suspicious so then they might ask you for can i see that like if you say okay i'm going to come to the us to go to school i'm going to come to the us to go to school so that when i come back i have an offer uh, with the same employer that is going to pay me like three times what i'm getting paid right now so something like that is that's big because you're saying i'm going to the us to study and then i'm coming back home to get you know to get to get to get better pay so sometimes they might ask you let me see that letter from your employer or you say you know say i have an offer i have something i have sometimes they might ask let me see that or you know just depending on the the usual i think they from what i've heard from many uh former visa officers speaking they are discouraged from looking at uh, at documents why because they know the embassy knows you know uscis knows the it's it's department of state they know that people fake documents and you know it's it's kenya kenya you can get anything you can get bank statements you can get marriage certificates you can get certificates for school you can get all these things fake so they know these are things they know these are things they are aware of so they try to discourage the vios from asking for those documents and so it really depends on how do you feel your ds160 but also how you communicate what you feel because they ask you questions that you've answered in the in the in the in the ds160 and if you're not being consistent with what you answered then it starts to raise red flags and questions so they you know they're looking at your well you know whether you're going with a b1 b2 if you're going with a b1 b2 then the only thing you they have from you is they have the confirmation page confirmation page for your ds160 and then they have your passport and the receipt that you've paid for that interview those are the only things they have for like a visitor visa when you come to like a student visa uh f1 visa they have an i they, so you they, they'll ask you for your i20 which is what is given by the school then they'll ask you for your passport they'll ask you for the confirmation page of your ds160 they'll ask you for you know uh ask you for the fee receipt fee that you've paid and then what you're also supposed to have when you come for school you're supposed to have a service receipt that you've paid for the service okay so this this documents are majorly what they use to interview a lot of times we put a lot of emphasis on collecting bank statements the the most asked question by a lot of people who want to it's it's about bank statements that is what a lot of people ask is how much do i need you know how much do i need to come for to come for a visit visa how much do i need to come for a j1 so a lot of times people focus on finances and the financial bank statements but a lot of times the number of times they ask for those bank statements i i believe 
you know, w- when you take a hundred percent out of a hundred times, I believe like less than five times they ask for bank statements because they know people cook bank statements. So you could have cooked a bank statement and people know how to cook this bank statements. So they, what they are wanting is they are wanting because they know, they, you know, they've, they've, they've trained. These are people who've been trained. They've, every time you go to the embassy and do an interview, you are recorded. If there's something fish, you know how you're like, you, you know how sometimes when you call into some places, they tell you this call might be used for training purposes. Well, when you go to the embassy, your interview, the whole thing might be used for training purposes. And so, you know, people who've lied and they've been caught in a lie and all those, so they have all that evidence in place. When they train all these visa officers, they train them all those things to read nonverbal cues, to look at you the way you the way you communicate. Are you are you being truthful? There's also, you know, there's a lot of when it comes to behavioral science, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of telltale signs. Some people have telltale signs, and some people are easy like good poker players pick telltale signs like there are people who you see them talking and they do something like someone when when some people lie they scratch their head some people lie they pull their ears so these are so some of these things to you they are just normal but to these professionals they've been taught so they can tell they can body language the way you communicate and so what they're wanting is for you to convince them the burden of proof when you go to the embassy is with you. You're supposed to convince the VO to give you the visa. The VO is there. He, he, the VO is there on behalf of the U.S. government. The VO is there representing the USA. And one of the things they want is they want to make sure that they do not let people in that they are not supposed to let in. And especially after you know after the 9/11 attack. That it's these things are sensitive. So they 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 are, they are looking at these things. They ask you questions, and you filled your DS one sixty, and you're not responding the same way you filled. Then those are some of the things that cause people to be denied. But I would say this one thing: the biggest reason why people get denied is because of inconsistencies between what you filled in your DS one sixty. For, this is for non-immigrant visas. What you filled in your DS-160 and what you communicate when you go to the, to the embassy. But also you have to know there are some things that you need. There are some requirements. Every visa has its own requirements. You know, you look at the visitor visa. The visitor visa has its own requirements in terms of there are some things that you need to check. Some, some things you need to... T- One of the things is, okay, uh, and these are some of the things that... In the back of this, the, the minds of the VOs is there. They are wanting to see, okay, if you're coming with a visitor visa, are you able to take care of the cost of this trip? How are you taking care of the cost of this trip? How? You know? How? How are you take? Who is funding this trip? Are you, you know? Because they, they, you've provided a lot of information that some people don't know. You look at the DS-160, one of the questions they ask you there is your employment. So a lot of times people don't know that all this information that you come and try. So because uh, speaking on behalf of Kenyans, there's something we call stories ajaba. Stories ajaba is stories that people share when they are when they are chewing cut cut, <laughs> and they are usually made up stories. A lot of Kenyans they like to make up stories. And this is where a lot of our Kenyans are caught in a lie. is because instead of going there and being truthful with what you, f- you want to make your story better, but you did not say that, and then you end up contradicting yourself. So, you know, when it comes to like, hey, are you, are you going to be able to cover the cost of this trip? That's, the, that's one of the requirements you have to meet because they don't want you to come here and become a public judge. They don't want you to come here and start mooching on on the system. They want you to be be able to provide for yourself. If you cannot be able to provide for yourself, you have an affidavit of support, you have somebody who's willing and they've committed to help you take care of the cost of your trip. So, yeah. So sometimes when you go there, you don't know 
that you might think they don't have information, but you've already given them the information. One of the information when it comes to finances and money, you've already told them how much you make every single month. Why? Because there's a question that asks. Okay? Unless you're self-employed, you have to say as an employee, this is the, this you know, this is the company I work for, I've worked for this long, and then per month, how much do you make? You put down. So you going there and starting to paint a better story than you actually is, is you contradicting yourself. And you contradicting yourself is you getting denied. So yeah, so cost of the trip, very important for a visitor visa. But also like the other thing that is very important is you need to uh, you need to show your intention. Because an, an unimmigrant visa is a temporary visa. It's a visa you're supposed to go to the US and then come back after the specified period of time. You know, whatever visa you're going with, whether it's a B1, B2, an F1, a J1, and a P1, or whatever, an O1, R1, whatever. So those are temporary visas. You are supposed to come back to your home country. So one of the things you need to show is your intent. There has to be an intent to come back. How do you show intent? You show intent based on do you have ties back home, that tangible good ties that will make you come back when you go to the US. This is what, so, and these are some of those things when you cover, when you go and do your interview and cover your interview, you're supposed to make sure that by the, you know, it's, because sometimes you don't know, A, you don't know what questions you're going to be asked. They don't have a, they don't ask the same question to everybody. If you don't know, they ask different questions to different people depending on your case, depending on your visa. So if somebody went with a student visa and they were asked, uh, what school are you going to? Why this degree? Who is paying? The other person will come in and they'll ask them, do you have somebody in the US? Yeah? Where, when did you graduate school? Where have you been working? So you see, it's like very different questions to different people, even people, people with the same, people going to the same school, the same visa, they can be asked different questions and so and you have to be prepared for everything you have to be prepared you have to be prepared for everything and so you have to ask yourself and this is it should be at the back of your mind what i want to make sure for a visitor visa i want to make sure that i you know i i i want to make sure i pass across a i'm able to support myself i'm able to support the cost of this trip and number two very important. I have to show my intent of coming back to my home country. If you go to the interview and you haven't, like, whatever you say, however you say it, regardless of what questions you are asked, and you have not answered those questions, it makes it so difficult for you to get that visa. And that is why a lot of people, you will get that 214B. You'll get that 214B. Why? Because you did not convince them. You did not give them a reason that you just, because sometimes we are very formal and you think, okay, I'm going to the interview. They will ask me questions. And then after they ask me questions, they will ask to see my documents and all these heavy bank statements that I've, I've brought. And then shock on you, they ask two questions and then boom, you're denied. And you're like, wait, wait, what happened? <laughs> so you have to make sure this is because it's, it's unless you've been to the embassy, Unless you've been in front of that counter, that window, speaking to that American visa officer, yeah, it this the stories we tell you are just stories until you face them, and the reality hits you when they ask you this question, because sometimes they you go prepare yourself to answer certain questions and then you go and they throw you a curveball. They ask you questions you questions you did not even think about. And sometimes some of those questions look very innocent, but some of those questions sometimes uh, they might ask you the same question two times, but in different ways. And if you're not consistent with your story, you will trap yourself. And that is how you'll get denied visas. The trick is to keep it simple, know your story, just be sharp, sharp like that. But also, you're at the back of your mind, okay, I've been asked one question. How have I answered that question? 
they might not ask you for, you for you to show your intent to come back to the U.S., but you need to prove to them. The burden of proof is not on the visa officer. The burden of proof is with you. You have to prove to them that you're not going... See, it's... They, they, it's, it's, it's the, you know how they say innocent until proven guilty? At the U.S. Embassy, you are guilty until you prove you are innocent. What do I mean? You are an immigrant until you prove you are a non-immigrant when you go for a non-immigrant visa. That might be a tongue twister, but let me repeat. They see you as an immigrant, somebody who wants to come stay in the U.S. until you prove to them that your intention is not to come and stay in the US. That is the trick. Whatever you, whatever questions you are asked, again, I, if you can keep those things in perspective, you know, I'm here to, it's an interview. It's, you don't have the job. Every time you go for, if you go to a job interview, you have to convince the interviewer, the employer, why should I hire you? Why should I hire you and not the gazillion that are the, the others that are applying for the same visa, for the same job? Now, this is a different case. Why should I give you this visa? Eh? You are, so you are an immigrant until you prove that you are a non-immigrant for you to be given a non-immigrant visa. Again, if you haven't I watched a lot of I were I I for me I put a lot of a, a lot of emphasis on education because when it comes to the US embassy it is not about connections it is about information when you go there with the right information I think that a lot of times that helps you more than going there with the right documents you can go there without the correct proper documentation but because you have the right info you know you have the you don't you might, you might not have the biggest bank statements you might not have the best ties especially financial you might not even have things like travel history to prove that you are you are the kind of person that goes and comes back but because you have information and you are well prepared for your interview and a little prayer you go there and get your visa so in those so many words i wanted to say the DS-160 is part and parcel of, the, that's the biggest reason why people get denied visas. Because you go there wanting to, because to us, and I think our culture does us a disservice, especially at the U.S. Embassy. Our Kenyan culture, people will not believe you until they see with their eyes. Here. Me, I come here sometimes, I tell stories. And then the first thing you'll hear from Kenyans, stories are Jabba, stories are Jabba, stories are Jabba. Why? Because our culture is not the believing cult until people see it with their eyes. Until I see that title deed, it is a scam. Until I see you have taken somebody somewhere, it is a scam. That is our culture. And that does us a disservice so much when we go to the embassy because our head, our head is thinking, okay, I need to show you. Huh? This look at my statement. Some people even do that. You'll see that in the when I went there a long time ago, somebody, somebody was like, here, here, look at my statement. And the visa officer doesn't want. The visa officer is like, Shh, tell me, don't show me, tell me. But our culture show me. People will not believe it happened until they see it with their own eyes. Now, the American culture is very different. Tell me. Show me first. And if for some reason I don't believe you, then I will ask you for evidence. That is how they operate. Is tell me. It's and so sometimes when you want, okay, even look here. This is what this is what most this is a, from our culture. Look here, even the school I'm going to, even my bank statement says, even, even, look, look. Because that's what we've been taught is you have to show for it to be right. No, but some, so, <laughs> the viewer most of the times will tell you no. Tell me. Tell me. 
And then I will look at the way you are telling me, the manner of which you are telling me, what I'm seeing on my screen. Does it match what you're telling me? Do you look like an honest person? Do you look like a truthful person? That's what they're doing. Do I believe you? And we've, even, and so that that is why you see a lot of people, they go. And they tell their story. And they get the visa without showing anything. Ask a lot of people who got their visas. They were not. Uh, me, I, I, I'm one of them. I had a very weak bank statement. I tell you this so many times. My bank statement was very weak. I don't have any travel history. In fact, my flight to the USA, that Turkish Airlines, was my, flight, my first flight ever. My first time ever outside the borders of... My first time to the airport, Jomo Kenyatta. And I lived in Nairobi my whole life. Because why? Because it's not about proving. Our culture is a proving culture. Prove to me. I want to see the paper. No, America is, show me. Tell me. Tell me. And then you know what they'll do? They'll look at you and assess you. And the, and the VO has been given power to give you a visa or to deny you a visa. That's why they've been given the power. They're representing the U.S., you're speaking to a representative of the United States of America. That they have the power to tell you. Unfortunately, today I will not approve your visa. They have the power. So you have to convince them. That's the thing. And it is more of the here and body language than it is on what you're carrying. I hope, I hope. People who listen to this, I, I've done this, I've said this time and time again. And we've had, me, I've had, we've had so many stories, testimonies of people who've gone there, gotten visas without having travel histories, having good bank statements, having, eh, even there, because you see somebody, me, one of, one of the first, first people uh, here in this channel, because right now I think we have close to 5,000 or so people through, who've passed through this channel to the U.S., to the US and the number keeps growing keeps growing like the last week last week I had 13 people get visas and about 16 people were denied so these uh, there's a lot of people who've gotten this information is helpful to them because the sooner you get your Kenyan mentality out of the way the better for you the sooner you say you stop doing things like a Kenyan and start because you, you, you're not convincing a Kenyan to give you a visa. You're convincing an American. You're convincing a patriotic American who loves their country, who is there to protect and safeguard the borders of the U.S. That is the person you're convincing. There is no connection. There is no at you. Because some people are told, oh, I have somebody in the embassy. It does not work like that. The U.S. Embassy doesn't work like that. At here, I have some, no, a lot of times those are ploys and scams to get you, to get, to get money from you. But you have to convince that person, that blue-eyed, green-eyed, hazel-eyed, brown-eyed, black-eyed, curly hair, blonde, brunette, black, white, whatever color, that is the part, that American is the one you have to face. That is the one you need to convince. And so, for you to convince them, you have to think like they think. You cannot think like a Kenyan. Because the Kenyan way of doing things and the American way of doing things are like two different ways. Ah, yeah. Okay. I think I answered that question comprehensively. In so many ways. Ah, yeah. Bye-bye.